In this video, we're going to be doing an introduction to unit testing using a framework called Jest. This is going to be a great primer for the upcoming videos I'm going to be doing on testing React. We are also going to learn what AAA testing is, so the next time you go for the interview or you're talking with your developer friends, impress them with this knowledge. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you're having trouble finding the subscribe button, it's right about here, the red icon. Thanks for clicking it. For this project, all you have to do is create a directory. I'm doing it from the terminal. I'm just going to go mkdir.js test, and then I typed code JS test, and that opened up my Visual Studio code. This project going, let's go ahead and create a node application. To open up your terminal, you can either use the shortcut that they show you over here, or go up to the menu, go terminal new. I'm going to use that shortcut to open up my terminal here. And then from my terminal, I just want to create a node application. So we're just going to do pm init dash y to create a default package JSON file. We get this default file over here, package.json. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install Jest. When we install Jest, we're going to save it as a dev dependency as we don't need it for our production code. Now, the thing that we're actually installing is this. This is the unit testing framework called Jest. The purpose of the unit test is to ensure that our code works properly all the time. Now, if another developer comes along and changes some code, they can run the test to ensure that the code is still working. Testing not only creates confidence within your code, but it creates high quality code. And this is the same type of high quality code that you'd be writing at most organizations. And if your organization doesn't write tests, you can be a champion of testing and advocate for it. With our project set up, we can go ahead and start to write our first test. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file called greeting.js. Greeting.js is a file that we're going to create that's going to be really simple. In fact, this will be the code over here. We have a class called greeting. It has a single method called hello. You pass that name in and then it returns hello plus the name. Now, this isn't a React or Angular application where we have import and export available to us, but we have something similar in our node application. We have require as its equivalent of export, which is the following over here. So module.exports will export the greeting class. Let's go ahead and write our first test. So we have our greeting.js over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new file. That new file is going to have the same name with the exception of having dot test .js at the end. This will be our test for greeting.js. In our test file, we're going to start by importing the greeting. And the greeting will come from our require, and it's in the same directory that we're in. Now, the structure of a test is as follows. In Jest, there's a test method. That test method takes in a string. That string is going to be the name of our test. So it'll be something descriptive, something like it should have the correct greeting when the name is supplied. Then the second parameter of our test is going to be a function. This function is going to actually execute the test and assert that we get the right value back. Step one of our test, we're going to go ahead and instantiate our greeting. So we're going to say greeting is equal to a new greeting. And then that new greeting, we're going to First, we're going to set up a name. We're going to say our name we're going to pass in is going to be Adam. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a result back from my greeting. So I'm going to call greeting.hello. Remember, that's the function that we created. And I'm going to pass in that name. So what we've done so far is we've created our greeting object, created a variable called name pass it into our hello method of our greeting and got back a result. Now, this is the part where Jest comes in. Jest has this function called expect. So expect will wrap our result and expect has many methods used to verify the value. One such method that we're going to be using is called to be. Inside to be, we'll go ahead and put the string that we expect. So we're going to expect hello Adam. So this is the variable Adam up here that we're passing in. And we expect it to say hello Adam when we get back the result from greeting.hello. Now that we have our test written, we need to run our test. So then we're going to do that. We're just going to go to our package JSON. Inside our package JSON, there's a scripts area. When we type npm test, right now it's just throwing an error, it's throwing this text onto the screen. What we want it to do is run our test. So 
So all we have to do is delete that part over there and replace that text with jest. Now when you run npm test, it'll go ahead and run all of our tests using jest. And you can see that our tests are now passing. We have a green, you can see the word pass. You can also see the name of the test with a little checkbox beside it. It mentions that we have one test suite. Well, this file is considered a test suite. And then we have one test. Now just for fun, if I were to go ahead and duplicate this test over here, and change its name ever so slightly by adding a one in front of it and saving it. Then doing an NPM test, you're gonna see that we have one test suite, so that's this one file, and we have two tests now. Now this test is kind of silly, it doesn't really test anything, so I will be removing it. But I just wanted to show you that test number goes up, and then we have the various tests written here. Let's see what a failure looks like in our test. I'm expecting hello Adam, but what if I was expecting empty and we rerun our tests? When we rerun our test, we'll get an error. And the error is actually quite descriptive. It tells us which line the error happened on, so the expect. And it shows us the expected value was empty, but we received hello Adam. So once you get a failing test, you're either going to resolve that in your code because your code is incorrect, or maybe you wrote your test incorrectly. In our situation, our test is incorrect. Now, anytime we make a change to one of our tests or our code and we want to run our test, we have to do npm test. This can become a little bit cumbersome. So within Jest, there's a watch that you can add to say, watch all the files. And anytime they change, go ahead and run the test. Within our package JSON, just add Jest space dash dash watch all. Click save. Now, when we run npm test, it's going to run all the tests by default, as you can see above. Then it's going to ask us how we want to watch. If you just hit enter, now, if we go back to our test over here, you can see it's run our test, it's waiting. Now, if I click save on this file and put a space over here, we see failed. If I get rid of that, then our tests are passing. So this is very convenient. Whether you know it or not, this test is using AAA testing. Now, AAA testing is the following three things. You arrange, you act, and then you assert. In our test over here, we are arranging here when we create the greeting object. We're also arranging when we set up a variable for the name. Then the acting is over here. This is where we act. We call greeting.hello using the name information, and then we get back a result. We take that a result, and then we assert that it should be equal to hello Adam. So that's where the assert is. And that's all the AAA testing pattern is. You arrange at the beginning, act in the middle, and assert at the end. On our greeting, let's go ahead and add a second method that we can test. So we have hello, which is the English version, and let's add a Spanish version to this. And we'll do hola over here, so hola name. And then we go back to our test. All we have to do is really just copy and paste this one over here. And we'll rename our test as well. So it should have the correct greeting when the name is supplied. We'll say for hola, so for Spanish. And then we just update our greeting over here. So now we're testing greeting.ola. And you can see already we're getting a failure when I click save. Expecting hola Adam, but instead it's getting hello Adam. So that's not correct. Let's go ahead and update that over here. And now we're getting the correct value. You can see each test is testing a different method. So this is what we call unit testing. We're testing a small unit of work. We're not only testing the class itself, but we're testing just this method in one test and just this method in one test. Now we might have multiple tests for a single method as well. And those will also be smaller units of work that we're testing. Let's go ahead and see what test-driven development looks like. So this is where you write the test first instead of the code. So inside of our greeting test over here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy this first test that we have. Then below that test, I'm gonna paste it. And we're gonna say we should correct greeting. The name supplied is Joe. So then we're gonna do is over here, we're gonna say when the name is Joe, it should say, welcome Joe. Then I'm gonna save it, but we're not getting that value back. It's failing, it's saying, hello, Joe. When our expected value is welcome, Joe. Now all we have to do is go ahead and make this test pass. Very simple, go into our greeting over here, and we'll say if our name is equal to Joe, then we'll return a different welcome message, and we'll say welcome, Joe, with an exclamation. And now our test is passing. As you can see, we're testing the execution path when we do the return over here and the execution path when we do the return for Joe. In this code base, it's really easy for us to tell what code we've tested or not tested because, well, we have a very small project. In a larger project, this would be harder to test, but 
Jest also gives us another tool called coverage. So if we add coverage to our project and over here to exit this, all you do is type Q and that will exit. We'll rerun our NPM test. Now when we're running NPM test, it's going to give us a little bit more information. I'm gonna hit enter here. And it's going to tell us how much coverage we have of our files. So let's go back into our greeting test JS and that test that we just wrote for Joe. Let's go ahead and comment it out and remove it and save. Now, when we take a look at this coverage of how much coverage we have for our test, it says that we're only testing 50% of the branches in greeting JS. The reason we're getting the 50% is because there are two code paths inside hello. There's the if statement where we go return welcome Joe. So that's one code path. And the second code path is return hello plus name. Tools like code coverage give us really good insights to how much of our tests are testing our actual production code. Over here, you can see that we're not testing all of our greeting JS. If we go back to our test, put that test back in, we'll be back at 100% coverage. Now, not every project can be 100%, but it's always good to have a good target like above 80% for your particular project. One last thing I want to show you is you can have more than one test file. We have greeting.test.js, which is equal to one test suite. Let's say that we had another class, we could add another test suite for it. So I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and do that. I've gone ahead and added a calculator class. It has a single method on it called add. It takes one number and a second number. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and add a test suite for it. So calculator.test.js. You can see it's the same name as the file. It ends in test.js. And it's getting a failure right now because this file is empty and it must contain one test. So I have some tests that I've written on another screen. I'm going to paste them in. And you can see it's got one test over here that says add two positive numbers together and it is passing but then we have a second test add two negative numbers together and we received negative 15 but our expected value was 15 so I'll go ahead and resolve that and now we have all of our tests passing and we have a hundred percent test coverage so I just want to show you that every time you add a new file or you want to test something you can go ahead and add a new test you'll also notice now that our test suite count has gone up so test suites you can almost think of equal to files we have two test files so therefore two test suites and between the two test suites we have five tests total you will also notice that we've only been using UB in our test to check that the values are equal to each other. Now, Jest has many other functions you can check out. If you go to their website, you go to API, and we look at expect, you'll see that there's many other ways to assert the value. You can check if it's falsy or truthy or not a number. So make sure to look through this documentation to see what's possible. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be an introduction to testing React components. As always, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. And I'm pretty sure the button's somewhere over here if you want to click subscribe. Yeah, you got it right over here. Just click that subscribe button. Thanks.